Hey team, welcome back to the PM Garage. We're gonna do another maintenance on this uh, 2021 Honda Rubicon. This is a TRX520 FA6. Um, it should be the same. This is the DCT uh, with the independent rear suspension. So it should be the same for most of these in this year model, at least from 2019 and up. So uh, yeah, let's get right to it. First thing we're gonna do is that we gotta start it up and run it for a little while to get the engine oil warm. Okay, it's been about five minutes, that should be good. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the seat. It includes my passenger seat here. Just reach to the tab behind your seat, pull it up, seat comes off, store your seat. Okay, next thing to come off is the center cowling. So there's only, there's three separate push connectors and there's a couple tabs. So they just pull off, just give them a good pull. It should pop out. Three on each side, there's one towards the back here. There's one right up in behind here. So you just separate the two. And then there's one up top. There we go. And then your center cowling just lifts out. Just like that. That should reveal the location of our filter, oil filter. But before we do that, we're gonna loosen this cap on the top of the engine on the filter side. There we go, just to let some air in so the oil drain. And uh, I will grab a ratchet to uh, loosen the drain plug. Your drain plug is this center hole right here. Make sure you put your oil catch underneath it should be 17 millimeters make sure you're backing it off and yeah careful it might be a little warm there's a uh, crush washer attached to the bolt make sure you don't lose that in your oil pan here because then you gotta go digging for it but make sure you also put it back after you're done because you need it to make the seal there all right oil seal in good shape that's it. While the uh, engine oil is draining, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil filter. Here it goes. This is the oil filter for this machine. It's a DCT. So um, this is the smaller filter. The foot shifts take a bigger filter. And there's a uh, written right on it. it says this outside filter cover or towards filter cover. So this is the outside. And on the DCT, the rubber grommet that's on the filter goes towards the inside of the engine. There's a little spring on the back side of this cover right here that uh, you gotta watch you don't lose. Um, it, it pushes against there and keeps the filter tight against the engine. So to take that cover off, it's just three simple bolts. They're 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead, take them off. I've got paper towel. It is a bit of a mess when it comes out because there's still some oil in there. Here we go. They're very easy to come off. They're not very big bolts, so take your time, be gentle. Once the bolts are out, the filter just pops off. It's uh, pressure fit with a, a rubber o-ring so just pull it off gently and then it's spring watch for the spring to come out huh? right there there's a the spring that's got to go back in <laughs> doggy okay filter comes right out you can see that the outside there's no rubber and then on the inside facing the engine is rubber Okay, that's how she goes in. Gotta get that right, um, otherwise you'll choke the engine of oil. I like to just dab it out. I don't really 
drag my paper towel. I don't want any debris getting in there, but just try to get all the oil, the oil out. Same with this. I'll dab the cover too. Again, being careful with it, not to get any paper towel debris in there. My oil is actually in pretty good shape, but the maintenance interval called for an oil change, so that's what we're doing. I did, however, forget to order a new gasket. This should be fine for a couple uses, but I usually get a new O-ring every time. I didn't on this time, um, but check your O-ring, make sure there's no flat spots. Um, yeah, if there is flat spots, just change it. Honestly, for the cost, I should have just changed it, but this time we are not, because I forgot to order one, and I'm not going back to the dealer because I need the four-wheeler for the weekend, so that's where we're at. Get her clean, make her look nice. Get your old one, or your, sorry, get your new one, new oil filter. And because I don't trust anybody, I just like to make sure that they're about the same. Yeah, they're the same one. Okay, so you can see, outside towards filter cover. Outside, all right. So put your rubber side, I like to put a little oil on it. Rubber side goes into the engine, fits nice and snug. And then carefully replace your cover, making sure that the spring goes in the center of this filter. And there is a mark somewhere on this cover. You see there's a mark. I hope you can see it in the camera. There's a little arrow. That arrow matches a line here. I think it's this line right here on the casing. Should be. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Takes a little finagling, but it's good to get it on. Oh, I'm losing oil here on the bottom. Okay. It's a little bit of, there. A little bit of finagling to get it in. And then you can push. Oh, oh I got paper towel caught in it. No. There. The cover just pressure fits on with the uh, the O-ring that's in there. Just stays in nice and flush. This little arrow that I showed you points up. It doesn't actually have a mark actually, sorry. Arrow points up, that little arrow in the casing. And then you put your bolts back in. I like to hand tighten them. One at a time obviously. So much like a wheel on a car or a truck. I'll push it in and I'll do a couple of torques at a time by hand until I know that the plate is seated against the engine firmly. Everything's tight. Okay. And then we come back with a wrench. I've lost the bit. There it is. Back of their socket, tighten it down. Now this is, uh, I think it's nine foot pounds of torque. I don't have a torque wrench that's that small. So we're just gonna do a light feel. Um, it's not very tight. So don't put a lot of effort into it. Just snug them down and they'll be fine. You can check them after a couple hours of riding just to make sure they're snug, but you'll start leaking oil from the plate if you didn't, so you'll know. Pull out this mess. And I tighten down just a little bit one at a time. That one, a couple of turns, a couple of turns, a couple of turns. Okay, now that they're tight, I'll snug them down. Maybe an eighth of a round here. Nothing tight because you'll strip that block. Okay, that's good. There. And that's how you change the oil filter. Once the oil has stopped draining, it's time to put the plug back in. Here's the plug. And uh, here's the little washer, crush washer that goes in there. Make sure that's on. All right. Also, when you go and get your parts, get a new crush washer as well. I didn't do that either. So I forgot, so we're gonna reuse this one, but it's cheap, peace of mind, just change it. Okay, so 
put your plug back in by hand all the way. You don't want to strip it. I believe this one is 18 foot pounds of torque. Still don't have a torque wrench that small, so we're gonna just do it by hand. It's not very tight, which is kind of surprising. But that's what it is. 17 mils, and I would give it maybe a quarter turn. No, not even an eighth of a turn. It doesn't have to be that bad, that tight. Okay, that's it. The plug is back in. Our next step here is to <laughs> clean up my garage floor because I always spill oil every time I do any oil changes in this garage. It's classic PM garage treats. Last step, get a clean funnel. Make sure it's clean, wipe the dust out of it. And uh, this is your fill port. It's right above your oil filter. And add 3.8 liters, I believe, into it. it. Takes a full bottle, 3.78. I'm switching to a smaller filter. It won't, that way it just stays there, I don't have to hold it. Okay, and yeah, plugs in. Oil filter cap is on and just dump the whole thing in. Maybe we'll speed this up in the interest of time. There you go. The whole bottle. Root. Oh, don't do that. We'll just make sure we don't get any dirt in there. Put our cap on snug again. There you go. The next step in the process is to start up the machine, let it run for two minutes, check for leaks around your oil filter cap, check for leaks under the machine. I usually try to wipe up the floor a little bit so that. Uh, I can see if there's anything leaking on the floor. Let it run for two minutes, shut it down, let it sit for two minutes, and then check the oil. And uh, it should be right between the marks. Doesn't appear to be any wet spots, so that's a good sign. Nothing dripping from where the plug is. There's a little bit dripping from where the, the foot well is because we spilt some oil, so it's just kind of wiggling its way down, but I'm not too concerned about it. Give it another minute, and then we'll shut it down. Okay, now our two minutes is up. We're gonna shut off the machine and then you have to wait two minutes to check your oil. And I'll show you why. I'll remove it, the dipstick, right away as soon as we turn it off and show you. All right, off. Immediately pull the dipstick, see if it's good. And look what happens. And I don't know if this is for all of them, but you wipe it away, put your dipstick in without screwing it in, and come back out. Because we haven't waited the two minutes, right? And like the oil is barely on it. It's like, it's on the bottom notch. <laughs> I, I know this is insane. Um, it drove me nuts the first time. I went to the dealer and I asked them how they checked the oil after an oil change and they, they, like, they said they didn't. They don't check the oil. They just fill it with 3.8 liters and then walk away. So yeah, there's an actual oil check procedure on these machines. You have to follow it to actually get a, a good reading. So we're gonna wait another minute and like 30 seconds and I'll show you again, okay? But don't panic if you immediately turn the machine off and check your oil. That's what you get every time. Oh. 
Okay, we've waited the two minutes. Let's check it again. Pull it out, give it a wipe, put it back in without screwing it in. There we go. There. I don't know if you can see it. What is it at the top? Little mark there. And uh, yeah, that's good. Perfectly set, right amount. If you let your machine sit for a night or whatever, you'll see the oil goes up to like almost halfway up the stick. I don't know, it's a weird procedure. I've never really seen an engine that does that. Um, but it's written in the manual and that's the way you do it. That's the way they all do it. So it's just something you gotta get used to. I just wish there was a cold marking on that dipstick make life 10 times easier there you go that's it that's uh pretty much everything last step is i'm going to put the center cowling back on and the seat i don't think i'm going to bore you guys with that it's just some monkeying around with these little push points one two and three but uh yeah it's easy enough to figure out everything sits flush again thanks for watching really appreciate it hope this helped anybody out who's changing the oil on their new honda rubicon um Hope it helped you save some frustration and some cash, and uh, I will see you soon. Really? I'm trying to film here. It's a man moisturizer. I hear my kids, they're coming. Make more better content. <laughs> oh, kids.